Okay. All right. So we are with Natalie Nelson today, and she's a representative from Phonak, uh, audiologist. Mm -hmm. How long have you been with Phonak? I have been a clinical trainer for Phonak um, just over a year now. I started last June of 2019. Okay. Okay. And how do you like it so far? I love it's it. The best. It is. Right. Um, I love being a clinical trainer. I always tell um, accounts when I work with them that this is my actual dream job as an audiologist. I don't mind public speaking. Um, and I just love working with people peer to peer. Good. Good. I say here, echo over there. Um, tell us a little bit about what are your favorite things about hearing aids? What you got, got you in the industry to begin with? So um, what brought me to the industry initially to be an audiologist is I started to um, go to school to be turn that off while you're talking. a special education teacher. And I knew that I wanted to work in some capacity as a teacher. And so I went to school for special ed and then I moved on and I ended up going to um, further branch off into deaf education. And so I went to school for deaf ed in Illinois, where I'm from. And then from there, that's actually where I discovered audiology. And that's how I, I ended up in the field. And I just knew I wanted to work with hearing aids um, from all of those experiences that I had. And how long have you been in, in Texas? I've been in Texas uh, just since last July. Oh, okay. So it hasn't, I actually had to move here for Phonak. So um, I moved here from Colorado, but it's been an interesting change. Worth it. You know, it's worth it. I love my job, um, but I will say that uh, it's different. Um, you know, it's so hot here in the summer, huh. and but I will say the- but It the, feels good today. It feels good today, and the winters here are like a dream Perfect. that I never existed, you know, when I lived in Illinois. No snow. So, good. And no snow. And my name is Philip Zamora. Um, I'm here from Trusted Hearing Center. I'm a hearing instrument specialist here. Um, we are just moved to Georgetown, uh, right on Williams Drive, and we're very, very happy to be here. Um, so today we're talking about the Phonak Paradise. So the, the name of the channel is I Heard That. So I Heard <laughs> That Phonak just came out with something new. Can you tell us a little bit about in general when it came out and, mm -hmm. and just in general about it? Yes, absolutely. So Phonak launched their newest hearing aid platform on August 19th. It's called Phonak Paradise. Um, and so it's been a very a big whirlwind the last few mm. weeks as we launch and, and people start fitting it and patients are, are starting to wear it and come back with feedback on it. Good. Let me see here. Um, so I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Um, first, I wanted to ask you about the APD 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that new mm -hmm. with the Paradise? So it didn't exist with the Marvel at all? Correct. Okay. So APD 2.0 is a uh, code for ad uh, Adaptive Phonak Digital 2.0, which is just a fancy way of saying it's our um, second version of the original um, proprietary fitting algorithm that we had in previously. And okay. um, all of the um, all of the product lines for the last 15 years have had the same fitting algorithm. So APD 2.0 is brand new to Paradise, um, and it brought about some pretty good changes. Um, taking a look at really looking at patients and what they need and what benefits they can get from hearing aids. Um, okay. So we've seen some some changes there and it, it's really going to help patients be more comfortable in noise, um, be more comfortable around loud sounds, but then at the same time, making sure that their speech understanding abilities are really where they should be. We don't want to mm. have people be comfortable, but also sacrifice clarity. Right. So making some good additions there with APD 2.0, and that will be available with Paradise moving forward. Okay. So the, the Marvel was a very good hearing aid. Mm -hmm. I think it sold what, over a million units. So it's very popular, very mm -hmm. good hearing aid. Um, what do you think? Do you think the changes to Paradise really up the game enough that it's like a significant jump leap above Marvel? Absolutely. So I was, I'm, I'm a skeptical person. Mm -hmm. I tell people this all the time. Um, so I really have to see it to believe it. And so for me, I was a little bit worried, you know, Marvel was such a groundbreaking product. Um, you know, we had so many happy patients. There were so many devices mm -hmm. sold that it, we were worried or I was mm -hmm. worried that paradise wouldn't be something that would be, you know, groundbreaking in nature, but we did add quite a few, um, things to paradise that make it, um, a pretty good step up from Marvel, but it really capitalizes on what made Marvel special and it mm. really just takes it to the next level. Right. I think 
I think we're we're gonna skip forward just a little bit because I, I want to talk about my favorite feature, which is the the double tap, um, which I think is control? really cool, and and the fact that you can actually hear who's calling you now um, instead of just the beeping. You can actually hear uh, even if your phone is in the other room, it'll let you know who's calling you, and you can just double tap to answer. Correct. Um, uh, talk to, uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Okay, perfect. So that's one of the big things with Paradise in terms of um, one part of the universal connectivity piece that we're bringing forward is the addition of tap control and then also what's called in-band ringtones. And so with tap control, this means that patients can control their hearing aids with a double tap to their ear. Um, I'm going to just do it because it's very simple. Um, with that, they are able to do three separate functions. So you can... Um, accept and end phone calls that way. You can pause and resume streaming that way. And you can also activate a voice assistant like Siri or Google Assistant um, and ask them to do things for you, like text people and start your music. And That's do another one things. of my favorites is the integration of, so, so it can maybe like even pull up maps or mm -hmm. some text. And I think the, the biggest deal is people that don't have as much dexterity or that can't mm -hmm. feel the buttons in the back now they can just tap their ear and it, it is the ear not the hearing aid correct they can just tap so okay. they can just double tap on the ear and then the accelerometer that's within the hearing aid that's a part of the new motion sensor picks up on that and it'll automatically um, go into awesome. the feature of the tap control so it is really cool i don't know if you've gotten to try it yet but i play around with mine all the time and it's it's pretty darn seamless awesome and then with the in-band ringtones, like you mentioned, um, that is something that if your phone supports it, you can set it up in your settings. And instead of, and you, you did a great job mm -hmm. of introducing it. So instead of it ringing, it will automatically say who is calling. So if I was calling right. you, it would say, you know, Natalie Nelson is calling. Um, what I'm most looking forward to with that, though, is when a potential spam is calling right. me and it labels the person. You don't as have that. to pick it up now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You can just let it ring through. <laughs> right. And um, I also saw that the they added more connections, mm -hmm. connectability uh, to Bluetooth devices. So you can actually stream or, or be connected to two devices now instead of having to turn Bluetooth off mm -hmm. on one device and then switch it to the other. Correct. And I've tested this out myself as well. So this was really exciting because in 2019, they found that mm -hmm. Um, consumers in the US had 11 connected devices yeah. in their house at one time. And that's based on like a two and a half person household. So I'd say the average person for me, I have three devices connected right. to something pretty much all the time. Um, so for patients that do have a lot of devices connected, we added more pairing ability and more connective um, or more connectivity ability. So you can have with Paradise up to eight devices paired at one time and wow. then two active connections. So that means pairing wise, that's a one and done. You just pair all your hearing aid or your hearing aids to all of your devices. And then you can seamlessly be connected yeah. to two at a time. So patients are able to just, you know, right. answer a phone call here. And then if they get a, a phone call on a second phone, like I do, since I have two different phones, um, it just transfers over seamlessly. Right. I don't have to do anything. Or have extra. it connected to the tablet. Correct. And then they get a phone call and they can just answer it. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yep. Awesome. Um, and tell us a little bit more about the the new chip. I think the Prism mm -hmm. chip. Uh, what are the, the biggest differences in, in that Prism chip? What does it bring mm -hmm. to the Paradise? So the Prism chip overall brought double the memory of what we had previously. So it's giving us access to a lot more room for all of the new features that we have with the hearing aids. And then it also gives us that improved connectivity um, piece where we're looking to have more um, devices connected as well. Okay. okay. Um, and, and what are the the major differences, you would you say, between the Marvel, besides the Bluetooth mm -hmm. and, and the double tap uh, and the Paradise? What features yeah. does it bring? So um, I think it really hinges on the three key innovations that they put into Paradise. So that's going to be unrivaled sound quality, personalized digital solutions, and then the universal connectivity piece. So with the unrivaled sound quality, that's what we're always looking to really capitalize on as much as we can, because that's right. why patients come into the office, right? right. They want to be able to hear better. So sound quality is always going to be key. Um, but we already mentioned the new fitting formula with APD 2.0. Mm -hmm. We have three new key performance features as well. Um, those are two big ones, an improvement overall to our auto sense, which is our automatic mm. classification system. That's another big one as well. Um, so plenty of, of new key innovations that really go into unrivaled sound quality. And then with personalized digital solutions, we're adding additional, 
um, functionality for both the provider and the patient when it comes to the MyPhoneAc app. And then with universal connectivity, we mentioned it a little bit, but additional improved connectivity and right. then also the introduction of tap control. Okay. Yeah, I, I was reading it. It, it brings a, a crisper sound mm -hmm. to it. Uh, so for the those people that are looking for better intelligibility, um, more clarity mm -hmm. from speech, um, that's something that it brings automatically, right? Absolutely. So especially with the introduction of mm -hmm. APD 2.0, those were there was three key changes that they made specifically to that with those types of things in mind, wanting people to have a better listening experience overall, better speech intelligibility, be more comfortable in loud sounds, um, just kind of brings the whole package together right. so people can hear their best. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to talk about the speech enhancer. Um, for soft level speech. Mm -hmm. um, so, so why is that important to add to the paradise, um, that enhancer? So soft speech, um, you know, I think a lot of times people think the key predictor in success is, is being able to, to hear noise, right? We hear mm -hmm. all the time, I can't hear a noise, that's my biggest problem. But another really big key indicator in success with hearing aids is, is really being able to hear soft speech. Right. And that's not just soft speech in all environments. It's really soft speech in a quiet environment. So examples of this could be, you know, um, hearing somebody who's maybe your wife is soft spoken. So soft spoken people hearing somebody whisper or um, what's been really pertinent in the last six months is being able to hear people at mm -hmm. a distance during social distancing. Right. So with masks with masks yeah. and at a distance and all of those things. And so what Speech Enhancer does for patients is it really just boosts those soft speech inputs, allowing people to hear better in those quiet situations um, when they do wanna hear those really, okay. really quiet signals. So for those, those couples that one doesn't speak up loud enough, she doesn't really <laughs> have to speak up now, it, it'll boost that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I'd really, um, Encourage that and still behavior. whisper a little bit, <laughs> uh, but it, it paradise is likely going to um, help those people out a little bit more than the the consistent. Well, you don't talk loud enough type right. of atmosphere, right? Or from the other room. <laughs> um, let's talk about the dynamic noise cancellation, um, and it can be personalized. Mm -hmm. Is that and, and is that in the app as well? It is. So dynamic noise cancellation is a noise canceller that's available. Um, it's an automatic feature. It's in mm. the hearing aids. Um, it's something that if you're in a, a noisy situation in the night in the top level technology, it's going to turn on automatically for you and it will go ahead and it will um, cancel noise um, from behind the wearer in order to make sure that you are hearing as much of the speech rising up from the background noise. Okay. And like you said, it is um, something that's customizable and it can be customized through the app for the patients based on each situation you're in because like most patients and like most people, mm -hmm. not everybody likes to hear the same in every single situation. Right. So that's part of that personalized digital solutions part where I said there's more functionality for patients and providers is that we do have access to the speech focus slider in the app and that's going to control the dynamic noise let's, cancellation. Let's look at the app because I think I think your <laughs> app is, is pretty cool and it has a, a lot of things that you can adjust. There is a lot, let's there's a, a lot of functionality in the app. See if we can pull that up here. We can find it here. Okay, we'll move on. I'll show it a little bit later. Um, so, so I know for I know from from my experience from using the app. Um, you, you have that noise cancellation reduction, mm -hmm. um, and then you have treble mid and bass tones that you mm -hmm. can adjust and personalize. Um, and then you have the speech focus. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That, that you can focus on if you're in a noisy environment. Um, and then all that can be saved into a special program mm -hmm. to go back later and just automatically go to that program. So if you have a, a loud, noisy Mexican restaurant you go to on Friday nights, um, and you need a little bit of help and you adjust it, you can go to that program that you made and, and automatically get there very fast. Correct. Um, yeah. Am I missing anything from the app? Uh, there, there's just so many things that you can control in the app um, in terms of, like you said, the bass, the treble. Um, so you can do frequency weighting in there. You can do volume. You can do program changes. You can create custom programs. Um, you can manipulate the noise block, so the amount of noise reduction that's happening. You can play around with the speech focus slider, which is going to be part directionality mm -hmm. of the microphones and then also part noise reduction as well. 
um, with the dynamic noise cancellation, as I mentioned. Um, and then outside of that, there's also additional things that you can just do functionality wise within the app. Too. Right. So what, what new models are available on that, on this paradise platform? <laughs> Um, so the Paradise platform, when it launched on October 9th, or on August 19th, um, came with four receiver in the canal options. So with those options, if the patient prefers a zinc air disposable throwaway battery, mm -hmm. if they want a telecoil for additional functionality, or if they want um, rechargeability, it, they really have a model for everyone at okay. this point. And then I, I would say probably the most popular one would be maybe the T-coil. Would you say that was a was a popular one? You know, it really depends. I would say rechargeability overall, the mm. percentage of people getting rechargeable hearing aids with Marvel was I believe 82 or 83% yeah. of our sales was rechargeable devices. I think that's going to grow with Paradise. Um, I do find that telecoils seem to be popular. A lot of patients, they just wanna make sure that they can get every single thing in a hearing aid. And um, sometimes that includes the telecoil. They may use it, they may not, but they just want to make sure that right. they have it. Uh, so I don't know if you know this. This whole lobby is looped oh, right here. Wow. So whenever we have, um, it's hooked up to this TV behind mm -hmm. me. Uh, when, whenever we have something streaming, to to make sure that the T coil is working, T coil program, or to demonstrate the T coil, um, everything in here is looped. Um, so we found that in our community, there's a lot of, uh, churches, mm -hmm. um, a lot of community, um, theaters, places, events. theaters, uh, gyms even that are looped. Uh, so one of the things I like about your product is not only the Bluetooth, uh, to every device, it's also the T coil and then the rechargeability all in one single package. So it kind of offers pretty much everything. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I was, uh, I know that was a big hit when the rechargeable telecoil mm -hmm. model came with Marvel and I'm excited that that's on the very first wave with Paradise yeah. as well. Yeah, and there's a lot of models that came out pretty quickly with this. With this did, yep. So that, that was really cool to see too. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, so can you tell us kind of the differences in, in technology? So there's four technology levels, mm -hmm. correct? Um, what would you say, I get this question a lot from patients, what are the biggest differences between those, those top two tiers and the, the bottom two tiers of technology, what they have and, and don't have? Sure. So, um, I think that this can be answered in a lot of different ways, but I definitely think <laughs> it's that a tricky question sometimes it is. And, you know, as an audiologist, obviously I, I'm not for your listeners. I was an audiologist that fit patients in the mm -hmm. clinic. So I'm no stranger to fitting hearing aids in office, uh, prior to working for Phonak, but I got that question a lot and it's, it really does hinge. I think at the very base level of the automatic classification system that Phonak has called AutoSense OS, mm -hmm. um, current version with paradise is 4.0. Um, with that, there are a certain number of automatic programs that the hearing aid itself is going to assess what situation you're in. It's going to make automatic changes. It's very seamless. It's very easy. And it's something that's not overly noticeable. All you notice is that you're just suddenly hearing better in these different situations. So putting them on and wearing right. them. Right, putting them on and wearing them. And so the higher you get in the top in the top tier technology levels, the more automatic programs that are available, things like speech in car. So being able to mitigate some of that road noise and, and it really to know that you're in a car to make sure that you can mm -hmm. emphasize speech appropriately in that right. type of situation. Or, or looking at, are you in an echoey room all the time where you're in big convention halls, maybe you're um, in those situations where you do get a lot of reverberant situations. Those are features that are only available in your top tier levels. Mm -hmm. When you go down in technology level, you don't get as many automatic programs, which means that the hearing aids aren't going to work as automatically or as purposefully for you. You can still add in manual programs, but then that also adds in, okay, now I have to find my push button right. and I have, I have to think about the situation that I'm in. And now I have to go ahead and put um, the hearing aids into that particular setting. Right. So the higher in technology you go, the more the hearing aids are just going to work for you. So if you are one of those people that just wants to start your day and be able to hear and not have to think about it too, too darn much, the top level tier is going to be in a lot of difficult situations. The, those yes. that have full-time jobs, maybe at a warehouse and then mm -hmm. um, go out to eat every other day at loud, noisy restaurants. Right. So I don't want to have to think about that. Yep. So if you're, yeah, if you're on the go, if you're busy, if you are an active person and you feel like you're in a lot of uh, changing situations, that's another good reason to go with something more top tier than one of the lower ones. Right. Um, let's talk about the uh, telecare. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because they're available on, on this platform as well. And I like using the uh, Phonax version because I can use the entire software to adjust the hearing aids and I can do it in real time while the patient is sitting on their couch and they don't have to come into the office at all. So I can make any adjustment uh, pretty much except for, you know, doing real or measurement and things like that when I would, I would need them in the office. Um, so what are your favorite things about the telecare option from Phonak? Sure. So Phonak's telecare is called Phonak Remote Support. And I would say my favorite thing is just the fact that, like you said, it's, it's real time. So it's a synchronous version. That means the patient can call you up. They can say, hey, I need to see you, but I can't come into the office. Is it possible that I can see you at a distance? Um, of course, the answer is always going mm -hmm. to be yes. And you can get set up with that patient. And when it comes time to see that patient, all you're doing is going right into your Phonak target software and you're um, going to start the remote support session with the patient. On the patient's end, they just have to go into their My Phonak app and you're going to connect to their hearing aids through the app. And then you can make all the changes that you need to through the software. So it makes it very easy. It makes it very flexible for patients, whether they can or cannot come into the office. Right. It's really great during this time when more offices were closed the last few months, or maybe they were seeing limited appointments. Um, it also gives a lot of flexibility um, in terms of who you can see. If you have somebody who physically just can't come in to see you, um, maybe it's really hard for them to come in. Maybe they're in a wheelchair or something right. like that. So it just gives a lot more flexibility to allow patients to still be seen by their hearing care provider um, and still get the same or similar level of care that they would get in the office. Right. I, I like it because if uh, the patient lives you know, 30 plus miles away you know, and they need just a minor tweak in maybe one situation, then I can make that tweak using uh, the telecare and they don't have to drive all the way in, or if someone doesn't feel comfortable right now coming out uh, because of COVID, then I can still make those adjustments while they're at home and they can see me at a later, a later time. Um, so I think that's it's been a, a, a big deal now. It's, it's been around for quite a while, yeah, uh, a couple years. Yeah, since um, Marvel, and I wanna say, I want to say February of 2019 mm -hmm. is when that initially launched, but please don't quote me on that. But it has been quite quite a while. Yeah, and, and it's, it's good that they had it because it, it, it's, it's really something that we've needed at this point. And uh, it's really nice to have just in case, even if you don't think you're going to use it, it's just nice to have. It is. And yeah. I think another point to that, too, is just really moving into 2020 and, and mm. so many offices um, working on a blended care model. So right. looking at how can I offer the option to see a patient in the clinic and really maximize the time that you have face to face with the patient when you do see them in the clinic, but then still customize a treatment plan for them right. um, so that you can see them virtually as well and, and really just kind of have the best of both worlds, too. Let's uh, let's go into our uh, question and answer section. Um, so if you have any questions uh, right below the video, um, you'll be able to write in your question and we will try to answer it as best as possible, um, either myself or Natalie. Um, so right below this video here, you can write in a comment. Let's see. Anything general, uh, personal, uh, related to Phonak or not, uh, telecare, uh, write in those questions right down below. And we'll come back to that. Let's see. What would you uh, what would you say to those that are that are looking for maybe a new pair of hearing aids? Maybe they've had their hearing aids for like five plus years, mm -hmm. um, and they're they're looking for something that's clear sound. Um, maybe they don't get out as much uh, because of COVID. Uh, and maybe they're going to go to the grocery store, uh, a couple of meetings, but for the most part, they're going to stay at home and watch TV. Um, what do you think that a patient like that should look for in the hearing aid technology as far as, you know, those tiers go from 90, 70, 50, and 30? Um, do you think they should always try to go for the best if they're, if they're not going to be in those extreme situations? 
or do you think they should look at the middle tiers um, or the bottom one? So I think it really, really depends on the patient and what situations they're going to be in. And I also think it, I think people should think about what is your life now, but what do you, what do you want your life to be? And I did have a lot of patients who would tell me that if they could hear better, they would mm. probably participate in a lot more things in their community than they actually did. And so you could tell me that you just are going to go to the grocery store or maybe you have a, lead a pretty quiet life, but that's your life now. So for me, if I was the provider, I would actually ask if you could hear better, what are other things that you would do? And then I would try to make a recommendation okay. based on that. So how would you, how would you change your lifestyle? Uh, would you start would you going? Yeah. Would you start going to meetings again or, or doing things that you used to do? You know, maybe they had a, a gardening club that they were a part of in town, or maybe, you know, they had a quilting club or they went to the library and there was a book club that they were involved in and, and they couldn't participate because right. all the people, you know, Susie over here at book club was super soft spoken. So for me, it's really just discovering what, what the person actually wishes that they could do with right. their life more so than where they're at right now. Okay. I, I, I uh, here at Trusted Hearing Center, we like to actually put the, the hearing aids on to demo um, after we do some real air measurement and then have them go out for a week or two. Um, because I think the best way to try the hearing aids is actually wearing them in the situations that they're in. Um, if they start off in a lower level of technology and they find out that it's it's not really compensating well, then they can come back and get them reprogrammed for mm -hmm. a higher level of technology. And that way they can find out for themselves instead of me, you know, telling them, oh, you definitely need, you know, the top end like every time. Uh, right. if, if the 70 is going to work for you, then it's going to work for you. And, and that's really the only way to find that out is by I, wearing them. I absolutely agree with that. Um I, I demoed quite a bit when I was in clinic. I think it's a really smart idea. Um, I do uh, cover the Houston area. There's a sales rep there named Bo Gatlin, and he has a really good analogy for that. You know, he talks about demoing hearing aids and the fact that you wouldn't go into a store and look at TVs and you're going to buy a new TV and they're going to tell you all about the pixel quality on each <laughs> TV and it being different but they're not turned on. They're right. gonna tell you that you have to purchase one and just figure it out once you get home. So I, I love that analogy. The last time I was in Houston, he, you know, he explained it that way. And I thought that was a really good representative of, of course, that's why you want to demo hearing aids because right. it's, a, it's a pretty big investment. It's an important investment for your life, but being able to know exactly how much better you're going to hear, I think is right. really important. Right. Let me see if we have any questions here. As I'm pointing at your TV, I don't know if that's yeah. on the video. I'm pointing at a TV, <laughs> and, and it's not on either. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we we don't know if the loop system works. Oh. No, I'm kidding. It definitely does. Well, you, you just have to come in <laughs> to find out. Um, I'm going to put the Phonak website on the screen here because it has a lot of good information about um, the new features that the Paradise offers. Um, colors here you can look at and the models that are available. Mm -hmm. And I guess I could probably highlight the, the rechargeable models have um, the motion sensor because that's another new oh, key yeah, piece that's right. um, is the motion sensor technology that's in there. So the motion sensor is what brings, I already mentioned the tap control, but it also brings an additional feature that I don't think I mentioned uh, with, no, motion, with yeah. motion sensor hearing. So uh, motion sensor hearing is available in the rechargeable hearing aids in the top three um, technology levels. And what motion sensor hearing does is if you are moving and if there is noise present, um, it's going to put this, the hearing aid into a wider microphone, microphone mm -hmm. mode so that you can get better speech intelligibility, especially if someone's walking next to you, um, better sound awareness overall. So, you know, if you're, you're walking along a pretty noisy urban street and you want to hear if a jogger is running up behind you, um, it'll help you with traffic patterns, so better localization and things like so that. So it knows when you're moving. It knows when you're moving. So walking, running, walking upstairs, um, it will know when you're moving. And as long as you're moving and you're um, in a noisy type situation, yeah. this is something that will activate automatically as well. And before this, it was more uh, acoustic sensors to tell when you're when you're moving or when you're in a different environment. So before this, um, we didn't have anything that was specific to movement. Mm. So no motion sensor prior to Paradise. Um, if you were in a noisy situation, it would do exactly what hearing aids should do when you're in a noisy situation and standing still or sitting. It's going to 
um, turn on like the dynamic noise cancellation. It's going to turn that feature on. It's going to try to reduce as much as it can from behind into the sides. Right. And it's going to really focus on who is talking in front of you because that's typically the signal of interest. Now, it doesn't work as well when you're moving because you might want to be able to hear additional sounds around you, but also think in the social distancing and coronavirus times, um, a lot of people are out walking, especially here in Texas, oh, all yeah. spring. So if you're walking with a communication partner previously, if it was really noisy, um, it would be more focused towards the front versus the side. You would have to turn your head in order to really pick up what that person right. is saying as well as you possibly could. So with motion sensor hearing, it just allows people to be able to hear um, in a more uh, a, a little bit wider of a manner and then right. it, without having to turn their head to see or their communication um, partner. that's really popular here is uh you know on the golf course maybe mm -hmm. um well the golf course with... is kind of quiet though so yeah. if they're in a quiet situation and they're moving it's already got a nice wide um microphone mode so okay. they wouldn't necessarily well, need it in that situation but yes i could see you that can, you can tell <laughs> that i don't i don't really golf <laughs> that much so uh, i don't know how quiet it is on the I golf think, course i think other than yelling like four is that what they <laughs> yell right when the ball is flying yeah, at your head are you asking the wrong person i have no idea <laughs> Um, I play tennis, so I'm not I'm not super fun <laughs> golf either. I wanted to uh, on our website trustinghearingcenter.org. Um, we have featured our our interview series, and so um, right now we have this countdown. Uh, of course, we're live. Um, we have our next interview next Thursday, um, and that's going to be with Mr. James Carr, and he's from Clear Captions. Uh, ADA specialist. So he's going to be talking about um, his his technology and, and what he can bring for those that, that really have trouble on the phone and, and need just a little bit more help. So captioning on the TV, uh, captioning for now for um, uh, for the phone. Uh, actually, Phonak has captioned uh, a caption app. They do. A separate caption app um, that it hooks up, it automatically translates from the phone call. It does. So it's called the My Call to Text app. That's available. Um, you can do it with Marvel, Paradise. Um, and the patient just downloads the app and then they can call out of the app to you know a business or something of that sort if they would like. Or if all of your family and friends want to download the app, it's free. You guys can call app to app and it's free. So all if I have hearing loss and I want to talk to my mom, I would just have her download the app and then I would call her from the app to her app, it would be free. And then what it does is it captions what I'm saying and what she's saying all within the app. Yeah. And then at the same time with my phone app hearing aids, then the signal for the phone call is still going um, through the uh, the hearing aids for me to hear. And right. we did do a pilot study on that last year um, just to see what the, the improvement was when we're looking at um, having both audio and visual versus just audio alone. And it, it was a pretty marked improvement. Um, people uh, were able to hear um, closer to, I think 93 or 94% okay. for that, um, okay. of what they were hearing. Right. The words. I use captions on the TV. I don't need to, but now I do. And I, I feel like I can't hear without it. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but it just helps. You're just used to it at this right. point. You feel like you need it. Um, let me see here. Um, so on our website as well, I wanted to look at this. Uh, we have a pretty cool feature. You can actually look at our hearing aid prices online and they are all right there um, we also have on our front page a place where you can if you find a hearing aid somewhere else you can give us the information and we will try to match or beat that price as well um, so if you have any questions um, for me about the uh, new Phonak product or um, any questions that you'd like to ask Natalie, um, I can always follow up with her uh, via email and get your questions an answered individually. Um, or I can answer that for you as well or direct you to somewhere on Phonak um, that can answer your questions. Absolutely. Um, do you have do you have anything else of the the paradise? I know it has there's a lot of new features. There's so much. I feel like we covered. I want to say we covered the vast majority of it, um, you know, from the remote support aspect to the amount of functionality that's right. in the app, all the new changes with the connectivity. Um, so we talked about that. We talked about the tap control. 
um, which is so easy to use and you guys are going to love it um, as soon as you have the experience of using really it because cool. it's so easy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think, like I said, the biggest thing was just really making sure that we hit on all those three key innovations that we were trying to come with with Paradise. And I think right. we did a really good job um, coming to market with a new product that's, a, a, like I said, a, a pretty great step up from Marvel. Right. And I think, it, again, those features mean almost nothing if you don't come in and actually try the hearing aid. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, so yeah. yeah, you want to, um, you know, if you're on the fence, if you're not sure that um, you know, you, you know that your hearing isn't great. You've never had your hearing tested, get your hearing tested. Um, it's, it's really hearing well as a part of your entire well being. Right. So being able to, um, hear well can affect all areas of your life. So if you feel like you are struggling, um, or you just want to have your hearing tested, come in, have your hearing tested. And, and how often should your hearing be tested? I always erred on the side of I get an eye test once a year. Mm -hmm. So I typically got my hearing tested and I have hearing loss myself. So I get my hearing tested typically once a year, once a year. So um, I think it just depends. But uh, definitely, if you've never had your hearing tested before, come in and get your just hearing do tested. It. Do it. Right. Find out how you're doing. And Even if you feel like you're doing OK, just go ahead and get it tested and just see where you are. Um, just see where you are. And if you do have hearing loss, um, keep an open mind. Hearing aids can be a, uh, a pretty big game changer. They're definitely not the hearing aids from 10 years ago. They are not. Uh, right. They are getting smarter and smaller. Yes. Um, I think that's always important it's to ask. It's very small. I always show get... Us, show us uh, one of those. Yeah. So I always get questions about um, cosmetically. So I have my um, Paradise Rechargeables that I have with me today, but these are... Um, these are my rechargeables, not my rechargeable telecoils. Uh, but size-wise, they're pretty darn small. And for those for those that are uh, they're they don't really want to go with rechargeables because they're used to the batteries. And um, what if the power goes out? Mm -hmm. I saw that you have one of those additions. So that's a battery pack. It is. So um, with the charging case for Phonak, you can get an additional power pack to put on the very bottom of it. And that gives several days of additional charge. So, you know, we're not living in the hurricane world here up in um, Georgetown. But uh, if you are in an area that maybe you do lose power or maybe I, I came from Colorado, all my people were hikers and campers. Yeah, travel. And, traveling and, and things like that. So if you're in a situation like that, the power pack is really nice right. for that because it does give the additional charge. Yeah, And it's very flexible because it has a USB at the end. So you can mm -hmm. actually charge it into your car if you need to, or any other USB mm -hmm. outlet. Yes. Um, so I think rechargeable is the way to go. And plus it's a little bit more durable, I feel. Yes. Um, I could say that it is. The nice thing is that the lithium ion battery itself is engineered to mm -hmm. last six years. So longevity wise is really good. Um, the other part of it being a little bit more durable really hinges on the fact that there's no battery door. There's no chance right. for corrosion. Um, so that's another big thing, which is where a lot of the corrosion you know, happens anyway. We so. live in an area that's hot and humid. So right. moisture moisture can be an issue in, in some of these places. So right. all of Phonex products are um, for Marvel for paradise are IP six, eight rated. So they do have that top rating for dust and yes. um, moisture and things like that. And it even has a place for a uh, dryer. As yes, well. the charger does that it comes with a rechargeable. So there's a spot for a little desiccant puck here. Um, it just goes in the back of the the case here. And then that will pull moisture anytime that you are uh, charging your hearing aids, right. which is nice for here as well. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining. I'm going to check one more time to see if there's any questions. I hope if there's no questions, that means I did such we a wonderful job. We answered everything <laughs> correctly. All right. No questions. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for... Oh, actually, we do have questions. Mm. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll do my best here, guys. Okay. Um, let's take let's take this question, actually, because this is, this is a big question. Uh, how does the new Paradise differ from what Costco is offering? So... I don't work for Costco so and for Phonak, we're all separate entities. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any idea what the technology even has um, going on there. Okay. But I can say very confidently that Paradise is not something that's being offered at Costco. Okay. So it's something very new. I mean, it, it, it came out in August. Very new. So it's not something that anyone really has. Absolutely. Um, I know that the product that they have is also non-rechargeable. 
as well. So there, there are uh, quite a few differences, especially now that the newer product is out um, that the Costco product won't have. That's a good question though. Um, okay, so another question was what do these cost? Um, so again, you can go on our website, uh, www.trustedhearingcenter.org and um, you can look at our pricing chart and it is all on our website. So we're very open with that. Um, let's see. Are the microphones forward facing or multi-directional? So that just depends on the situation that they're in. So I s sort of alluded to that a little bit in terms of the different microphone mm -hmm. modes that are available. That's something that you guys have a little bit of control over in the app as well. So depending on the situation you're in, you could have pretty wide microphones where you're um, listening all around you, more of an, in an omnidirectional. Once you're getting into a noisy situation, you're going to have microphones that are going to um, be a little bit closer to the front because that's typically where a person's trying to listen to. Right. So it really depends on the situation that you're in, um, especially in auto sense, the microphone modes change. And also that's something that you guys can manipulate mm -hmm. a little bit in the app with that speech focus slider bar. And then that will manipulate a little bit of the directionality too. Did the placement change on the, the newer Slightly. platform? Slightly. It just moved over um, okay. just to differentiate a little bit from Marvel to Paradise. Okay. Um, but it's still in terms of functionality when it comes to wind um, testing and then hair testing over okay. it, um, it still functions just as well right. as where it was with Marvel. Okay, perfect. Um, does this have a T-coil and a cross as well? So great question. Um, we have, a, so we have telecoil. There's two models with Paradise that have the telecoil, the 13T and then also the rechargeable telecoil that we mentioned earlier. Um, in terms of a cross, Phonak does have a cross available. It's on a previous platform. There are several different models, whether you want um, a, a behind the ear style or if you want an in the ear style as well. So a lot of cross options with Phonak. We just don't have a cross on our current platform. Um, it's definitely on the wish list and we're hoping <laughs> it's something that does come in the future. I definitely think Phonak is, is really committed to cross technology. Yeah. I think it'll come out. It just it's just, it'll round out everything. I think you know it'll just give give everything. There there's no excuse for um, for not to have it. It's it's going to be a great product. I think when it does come out. To be fair, it's the top thing that people ask me about. Yeah. So I know we know that it's important. We know that it's it's something that's being worked on. Right. Um. It's just a matter of when. Right. Let's see. Um. And then of course, uh, by cross. Um, does the the Bluetooth connectivity of the Paradise? Um, do you feel like the the Bluetooth is more stable than the Marble was? Um, is that what the uh, Prism chip brings? Is better Bluetooth stability, um, like with the app connecting and and connecting with the phones and things like that? You know, I didn't have a lot of issues in terms of Bluetooth Classic mm -hmm. connectivity with Marvel, but I have heard a few reports, early reports so far, saying that they feel like the connectivity is a little bit more stable with Paradise. Um, I don't know that that has anything to do with the chip, possibly because mm. there's a little bit more memory there. Right. Um, it could be part of it, uh, but we'll see. Right. I, I use I use one on my right side for uh, hands-free calling. And I feel like it's very stable, um, and that's with the Marvel. So, um, yeah, I didn't have a lot of issue with mine in right. terms of the connectivity and the, yeah. the stableness. Yeah, and then being able to keep it in your pocket or keep it on a table and be able mm -hmm. to walk around the house. Um, so it's great. And if you if you're someone that loses their phone and you're still getting a phone call, now it's going to be able to tell you who's calling, and then you're going to be able to answer it. Or not answer um, it. Or not it's answer potential it. spam. That's right. <laughs> is there is there an option to send it to like a voicemail or decline it? So there isn't. So with the tap control, mm -hmm. it's going to be the answer and end the phone call. If they don't okay. want to, if they want to reject that call, I believe they can still press and hold on the button okay. in order to reject it. Or they could just let it ring through. I think letting it ring through is probably easiest. Okay. All right. Let me see if we have any other questions. Uh, we do have one question here. Are the in-the-ear models as strong as the behind-the-ears? Um, so I'm guessing for fitting range. Mm -hmm. um, what is the fitting range for that in-the-ear? So um, we have a, a full portfolio of our custom models, which is called the Verto, on our Marvel line that came out 
the, just this past spring. Um, in terms it's of- It's a very cool product. It I is a say. very cool product. Uh, there's some that are connected. There are some that are non-wireless that don't have any connectivity. But um, in terms of the fitting range, we can fit all fitting ranges with that, even up to an ultra power receiver, which is for people who have pretty darn significant hearing loss. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And then of course it has that same Bluetooth connectivity as well. Correct. Which so, is... yep, the Verto um, M312 wireless model is the one that is fully connected. So it's a custom hearing aid that can get up to an ultra power receiver in it if somebody needs a lot of power. And then it does have all of the, the fun stuff that right. comes with the Bluetooth connectivity and the connectivity to the accessories and the right. app and phone calls. And everything. When we say Bluetooth connectivity, because I think Phonak is, Phonak is unique in this, is Bluetooth connectivity, period, mm -hmm. Bluetooth. Uh, that means not just Apple, that means to Android or any other device that uses Bluetooth. Um, I even found some flip phones mm -hmm. that you can connect it as well. So um, pretty big range of Bluetooth connectivity. That's right. Yeah. That. So Phonak uses Bluetooth Classic for its strategy for um, connectivity for streaming and for All phone right. calls. So that means iOS, Android, um, a multitude. I mean, I believe the number is 10 billion different Bluetooth enabled devices that are on the market can connect directly with right. the uh, with the Marvels and now with Paradise. Okay. I'm going to give uh, 20 seconds if anyone else wants to submit a question for us. Do you have the Jeopardy tone I wish. in here I where need we can to play have... it for, for final answers? 30 <laughs> seconds, everyone. <laughs> I've been watching Jeopardy on Netflix lately. For some reason, it's on there like a few seasons. Really? Mm -hmm. huh. I like game shows, so and I feel like I always learn something. Or I feel really smart when I know the answer to something on Jeopardy. We should have had a, 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 a prize at the end for the last question. Uh, let's see. We'll give it. So a everybody just seconds. rushed to ask a question. Right. <laughs> Let me see. I'm going to see, show the uh, in the ear marvel. Let's see. I, I really like it in black because it looks like it's a, a hearable. It does. More than a hearing aid. I have a pair of the Verto Marvel Blacks and I love them they fit my ears really well the hearing quality is really good in terms of sound quality and then the streaming quality is great although now no one no one is really asking if that's a hearing aid because people have things in their ears all the time so it's kind of the the best time to wear hearing aid as well um you can just say that it's a earplug and does it connect with the roger as well it does so okay. it's that's the first time that um phone x been able to have that direct awesome. connection um with no external receiver with no boots no boot no, no boot external receiver when it comes to a custom hearing aid as well so it does connect with that and also the accessories too awesome uh like i said if you have any questions um give me a call you can email me at philip p-h-i-l-l-i-p at trustedhearingcenter.org. If you have a question for Natalie as well, um, I can uh, contact her and get your question answered. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me um, today and answering our questions about the new product. Um, I think it's a great additions to it and some really cool features uh, for a hearing aid that really does a lot of things. Um, so it's really, it's really hard to beat. Um, do you I have any agree. Um, I would just, my final thoughts are always going to be to get your hearing tested Absolutely. and, um, make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Cause that's really the most important thing. Absolutely. Thanks All for right. having me though. Thanks for, thanks for coming again. <laughs>